Now, what is a processor? Since we'll be working with the Arduino processor, we'll be looking inside of that in detail. And But before we get into all the details, we're going to cover a few things to get everybody all on the same page. We'd like to use this to provide a common starting point for everyone to build upon and cover some basic items that may or may not be known by all, some terms, and just a little bit of basic architecture on a processor. What is a processor and what's inside of it? What do these processors do? What are instructions? And how do we get those instructions to the processor? Processor, really, quite simply, it's a computational device that reads and operates on a set of instructions. You tell it what to do, and it carries out those instructions. The type of instructions that you write will determine what the processor does and where and when. And best thing about a processor is just think of it as a powerful programmable calculator that will keep repeating calculations until you tell it to stop. One of the things about these processors is that the density on them and the amount of things that they're able to put inside of a, a single chip have really increased by orders of magnitude. It used to be that a single board, 8x10 board, had a little computational unit, had some input-output devices, some memory, and all the things needed to support a uh, compu something similar to the Arduino. Now everything is all fit on a single tiny piece of silicone, all on one chip. Let's talk about some terms that you'll hear and get these, go through all of these. A CPU, Central Processing Unit, that's where all the computations and thinking takes place. You have flash memory, and that's where the programs and instructions are stored. Flash memory is a type of memory that can be programmed all at once and will retain those instructions even if the power goes off. You have another type of memory called SRAM, or Static Random Access Memory. Think of this as your data and variable area. You can keep, keep your information, your calculation results in there. It is temporary storage and it goes away when power is lost. So if you store numbers in SRAM and you expect them to be there when you turn your system off and then back on again, they'll be gone and it, it's set to any kind of random data value. EEPROM, that stands for Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. It's a mouthful. This is additional storage for information. It does not change often, but you need to retain it in the event of a power failure. Many times calibration coefficients are stored in EEPROM and it helps you keep these values that may need to change but not change that often. Input and output. This is how you connect your processor to the outside world. Working with a PC we think of input devices like a keyboard, a mouse. Those are two common input devices that we're all familiar with. And then output devices on a big PC would be a say a, a display that you're looking at right now, a speaker. Those are two examples of output devices. Your Arduino is real simple and what they have on there are a series of wires that can connect to the outside world. Peripherals inside the CPU are hardware devices that perform connection to specific outside world devices an example of that is a serial protocol converter, and your Arduino has three different types of those converters to go from analog to digital, so you can read the outside signals, timers, and other devices. So let's talk about what a processor does here. It'll go through the instruction list, commonly referred to as a program, it reads that instruction list and determines what operation to perform, carries out that operation, and continues reading through the instruction list until it's told to stop. Many times a program 
we'll go through a whole f series of instructions and then when it gets to the end of the instructions the next instruction is to repeat from the beginning and so the processor will repeat through that list over and over and over again until the power goes out or some external event tells it to stop so what are instructions the instructions are you provide the processor with the task that it needs to accomplish programming a processor are the steps necessary to store the instruction list into the processor so it can execute the instructions we give the processor instructions in a form that it will understand you write them in a form that you understand let's go through an example and if I were to give you a series of instructions to perform a task and we'll do that on the next page but before you get there make sure you have a pen or pencil and a piece of paper ready to go we're going to go through a series of instructions and I ask you to carry out those instructions one by one as they come across the screen. Okay, first off, pick up your pen and hold it so that you can write with it. Number, number two, look outside the closest window. If it is dark and the sun is not outside, go to step six. Right, the sun is out on your paper so in this case it was not dark and the sun is outside and so you wrote the sun is out on your paper now that you've done that stop and take in no further instructions here comes step six so at this point it is dark the sun is not outside so you're going to write the sun has set Now stop and take in no further instructions. Okay, your paper should have one of two phrases on it, depending on the time of day that all these instructions were carried out. You were the CPU. You read the instructions and then carried out the operations. Your eyes were your input device. Your hand and pen were your output device. And the result of your operations is stored on the paper. So how do we get the instructions that we want to write into the Arduino processor? You'll be using Arduino software to write the instructions for your processor in software that's referred to as an Integrated Development Environment or IDE. Your instructions will be written using the IDE running on your PC and it will be in a language that you can understand. We will be going over these instructions and you will be developing your programming vocabulary as we go on throughout this course. The IDE will then connect to the Arduino using a USB interface and transfer the instructions into the processor where it will program it into flash memory. Next steps, we'll walk through a basic programming sequence to get you familiar with the Arduino and the IDE. We'll set up your Arduino to an LED. We'll write a set of instructions to make the Arduino blink that LED. We'll download the program to the Arduino and we will test it out.